Dave Castro is probably the best player in this game. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Mutt gameplay. This is going to be a post-com of a really good and competitive matchup versus Lord Phenom. We did partake and matchup in the Ghost Gulag, and it was honestly a really good game. It was a good game, like I said, but it's more intended on showing you how overpowered David Casper is on a Raiders 50 theme team. So before I get into the video, um, you know, hit that like button, comment, all that good stuff, and thug it out to the end. There's some good stuff in this gameplay that you guys could look at and, you know, maybe add to your scheme. But here's the team I'm rocking with. It's a Raiders 50 theme team. I'm gonna go quickly. You know, I did get my Casper. Keep in mind, in this gameplay, I was using A-Rod. Let me know what QB you guys are using down below, whether it's A-Rod, Vic, or Bledsoe. That's the biggest question at hand right now. I love uh, A-Rod and I love Vic for their, you know, separate reasons, but I don't know who to use. You know, there's games where like, damn, I wish I had Vic. There are games where I'm like, you know, I needed Rodgers in this game. I couldn't get the ball out or I got too many under pressures. So let me know who you guys are using. For this gameplay here, my abilities, I'm gonna put you guys on some free game. I don't know if I'm gonna do a video, separate video on this, or just like a short TikTok, but the short end elite combo with a slot up run is tight end in bunch is pretty overpowered on your tight end. Using short in elite and outside apprentice on Larry Fitz. Kevontae Turpin with that one AP short in elite. Jay with a two AP threat detector. Short in elite and slot apprentice for two AP together. I decided to end up not using any abilities on A-Rod or any D-line cams, excuse me, O-line cams. And that was pretty much my offensive AP. On the defensive side of things, I decided to switch it up a little bit. You know, we all see these three to four inside shades or KOs. I decided I'm gonna use Clay Matthews with that two AP double or nothing. Three AP edge set on Chandler Jones. One AP Lurker, three AP Champ Bailey inside shade, and then three AP inside shade on Lester Hayes. And I've already should have posted some Raiders 50 gameplay, but you know, I'm still gonna rock this theme team for a little bit. I know Legends is pretty popular. Also, let me know down below what theme team you guys are rocking, whether it's Legends 40 or Raiders 50. So finally getting into the gameplay, I'm gonna break this down in a post-com type uh, thing. See right here, our top three is gonna be Dave Caster, Derek Johnson, and Larry Fitz. I mean, whenever I see Dave Caster, I'm like, okay, you know, eliminate him immediately. But yeah, man, like I said, this is a Raiders 50 gameplay. This is versus Lord Phenom, AKA Lord Kev. Um, you know, he actually played a really good game and you'll see this is a great gameplay. Starting off the play early, we're gonna set up our tight end apprentice on this corner route and we probably had it. Honestly, he kind of did get blanketed, but with that free form to the left, I maybe could have dotted it up. I, I had pretty bad pocket right there. And one thing I've been playing a lot against is this dollar coverage. And man, I'll tell you what, it is extremely effective. See right here, we're gonna hop in the tight slots for a play and just try to get a few yards back from that sack. And that's what we do. Uh, we end up hitting Crabtree. I may have had one of the corner routes open, but you know, I just want to get a few yards. Right here, guys, we are going to be trying to hit a dot, and that's what we do. We hit Larry Fitzgerald, who has got the best hands in the game, except he fumbles for us. Steve Atwater comes out of nowhere and absolutely punches the ball out. And thankfully for us, we do hold him at the two yard line. Seven would have been pretty devastating right there. First and goal, he decides to go in this near out of West Coast or the far, whatever this was. And I ran command, you know, he was just trying to run the ball out of that formation. No one ever passes out of there. Once more, he's in West Coast playbook. You see right here in the doubles North. I know it's a run, a run, but he ends up running jet sweep. We shift our line at the last second and run commit right. And man, if I didn't run commit, that probably would have been a touchdown. And per usual, guys, we're in the Kansas City defensive playbook. Right here, we send the screamers, have a great user, and he decides to throw the ball away. Um, nickel normal for, you know, that inside the five type of defense. I like 3-3-5 a lot. I like dollar, but those defenses are kind of mid and sus versus the run. Another good defensive uh, formation you can run inside the five is that 4-3-6-1. Um, is, you know, they're going to naturally do well versus the run the more people in the box. See right here, man, um, you know, first drive, you know, kind of went, you know, not that well. Right here, we're gonna hit Dave Casper on the flat, and man, I'm telling you, uh, there's such a big difference between him and Parham. Parham probably ends up getting picked on that, or, you know, if I do throw to him, if I do complete that pass, I probably get zero yards, but, you know, think of Dave Castro as like a receiver at tight end. He gets Slotomatic, excuse me, Slot Apprentice. He gets any ability, honestly. See right here, we're gonna hit him right here on this corner out. Great free form to the outside. And he had Delpit guarding him. I mean, I have a speed advantage on him. I, I believe my Dave Castro is 91 speed. I'll show his stats after the game. Um, and you know, I gotta remember that. If there's like a streak or something, I gotta see if I could throw that streak or, you know, try to throw that streak. Cause right here, great wheel route dot to Britton Brown. That's one position the Raiders definitely need to upgrade. At least we have a running back at that position now. But I, I want to use Ricky. You know, I want to use Bo Jackson. I want to use any like good Raider that comes out. Obviously, Ricky it, or Barkley are probably the best running backs in the game right now. I definitely need um, Marcus Allen to drop. I definitely need, you know, 
Eric, Eric Dickerson. I need someone. Bo Jackson, Josh Jacobs. I need someone to drop. See right here? We're going to hit this Dave Castro on this in round. Man, I'm telling you. I used and I abused Dave Casper in this gameplay. Just continue to watch the gameplay. It, it He's crazy. Right here, we're trying to get this corner out open to either sideline. He was in dollar, a lot of man coverage, and, you know, um, just trying to mix it up. Right here, I thought I was going to get a, you know, great animation. It could have gone either way. I 100% would have loved a, you know, completion on that pass. It would have made, you know getting seven that much easier maybe it could even got seven on that but thankfully at least i didn't throw a pick on so right here we have our threat detector lighting up you see right here it's a great ability especially if you're playing dollar um you know three three five nickel normal he actually ends up going coverage at the last second and i have a aka dave Castro wide open said i make a very bad read um and i'll, I'll kind of explain why i threw that for one I was kind of used to playing with Vic in that set feed lead. Not saying he could have snuck that in there, but you know, it would have been, it wouldn't have been in the air that long. See, the ball is in the air. So, you know, it just, it's in the air. Vic maybe makes that throw. And another reason why, you know, it just wasn't the read is because I have Cavante Turpin right there. If anything, I could have thrown a high ball, maybe got lucky. Um, but Turpin is five foot nine. He is a beast with that short end for one, but man, that five foot nine frame is just not as glitchy as see right there justin jefferson stiff arming stiff arming us not as glitchy as like moss in the slaughter whoever it may be so definitely miss dave Casper on the read right there i didn't think he at the last second i had to detect he switched it up and played coverage so great play design by him great defense and one thing about this game man trust me he i don't know how many tackle battles there were but he won every single one it, i was kind of getting annoyed at, after some time because he was just continuously winning them See right here, I believe this is a verticals and he just ends up throwing the ball away. So great patience to throw the ball away. Something I got to do better is just throwing the ball away when it's a busted play. Right here, he goes to verticals again. And uh, I think I played a third or something. It glitched out, you know, just I don't I was not expecting that, you know, no one really throws that type of, you know, like flat or whatever it was right here. Justin Jefferson is motion and in West Coast, this usually means deep corner is coming. And what did he run? He ran deep corner uh champ bailey honestly played really good defense i felt like you know that deep corner is hit or miss it's either gonna be wide open or it's not gonna be open at all right there it was not open at all right here guys he goes to this instant flat and look at this play man and i told you bro i don't know what it was this dude was just spamming a like i like it's just like i don't know tackle battle is a great idea but on the defensive side of things it's so hard to win those tackle battles all the offensive player has to do is just spam a as soon as they get the ball whereas the defensive player like you have to make great pursuit angles you cannot spam a so i was definitely struggling with against that right here he throws us a book we need that pick because it, it just it just means a lot you'll see here in a second next play literally the next play we have a pretty bad user champ bailey gets cooked with that inside shade and deep corner dot so one play the last play could have been a pick should have been a pick instead i mean it could have been a high ball as well instead he ends up getting seven so I'm not gonna lie, I have not played that bad at all in this gameplay. I fumbled once on my first drive. In the second drive, I just made a pretty bad read when I was moving the ball and maybe could even settle for three. But you know, it is what it is. We're gonna have to fight back real quick. See right here, guys, we are just gonna go underneath right here, hit X, and we kinda, I don't know, I think I messed up the free form or just got unlucky. Whatever it was, he was screaming. I had to get the ball out immediately. And man, this dollar, it's its meta for a reason. And I, I was kind of telling you guys, this is going to be meta in this year's Madden. Um, I made a like quick TikTok about it. Dollar, it's so good. And you know, zone coverage out of dollar, it's its not the worst. I know zone coverage is pretty tough to run in this game, especially if you have set feed lead and all that type of stuff. But you could definitely get by with running zone in this deep, running zone in dollar with you know the proper adjustments right here great high ball dot i had seen something to play before and i'm like okay you know what let me just take advantage he's kind of you know getting burnt let me see if i can highball it and if you don't know man the high balls are super effective in this game if you highball something and you have a step on them you're probably going to either one catch it or two just nothing happens you drop the ball you move on to the next play odds are you're not going to throw a pick on a high ball Decided to just run the ball right here, secure the first down. And that's what you got to do in this year's Madden, man. If you're like a third and two, third and one, even second and one, um, you know, just get the first down, secure the first. There's no guarantees that you're going to get it on that fourth down. Right here, great play, mesh pose. I cooked up a hot one, man. I motioned out my tight end and it kind of threw his defense off guard. That could have gone a little bad. I, I kind of free formed it a little too up. 
he could have definitely almost picked that off. Like, let's just say Acrobat's in the game. That's probably a book, but you know, no one uses Acrobat uh, for that five AP. And that's a good thing, honestly. It's way too expensive to use. And it's, I don't know. I, I hate playing against Acros. Could you imagine if everyone had Acro in this game like last year? This is the biggest shot of the game so far. He does get ball half right here. We are screaming and we end up getting the shed and I just have a pretty bad user if you ask me. I think I decided to go use it a corner out. But one thing I did notice this year, guys, it's pretty hard, it's pretty hard to have a consistent and, you know, pretty decent user. I feel like it's just, it's just so many inconsistencies. See right here, I wish I could have got a D-line pick right there. We are absolutely humming at this man with our edge threats out of this nickel 3-3. And that's what you're going to see a lot of from me or a lot of players this year. I don't know about sticking in one certain defense all game. I feel like I could just run a few different sets. Like if, you know, it's a like a goal to goal situation. I 100% do not want to run dollar. They can run the ball. I see right here. Look at our hard flat. We have a hard flat on the left side. I guess I should have pressed him. I guess I should have pressed him, but we have a hard flat. I'm thinking, you know, if I press, I'm going to give away my look. These are really good adjustments for, you know, the situation and hard flat. I guess I should have pressed, like I said, but I don't know, man. I was very upset about that. I have a hard flat. I guess maybe I got to put it on zero next time or shade underneath or something. But that's the thing about the zones in this year's Madden. They just kind of inconsistent. Right here, guys, he is going to just hit us with his verticals wheel route. We played cover three. It was wide open. Once more, another third down and one. Big situation right here. And he hits us with corner strike, except he ends up dropping it. So corner strike, like I've been saying, it's not the greatest risk, man. It's a great play to have for zone. And it's a great play, you know, just to have in your playbook. But I could trust that's not going to get open, honestly, ever. Maybe with route tech, that's an exception. But route tech isn't out right now. Big fourth and one right here, guys. Big fourth and one right here, guys. And he just throws this flat route again. He was living by the flats. And I just, I don't know what was going on. I just could not defend the flats for any any you know any play honestly so you're gonna see i start to like you know okay you know what i can't let him just continuously throw flats and what that's gonna do it's gonna open up other patterns see right here he actually had a uh, ak the tight end wide open he ends up just not throwing it for whatever reason and then when he did throw it it was just too late right here guys like i was saying he's gonna go to hit start hitting some corner rounds now that i'm playing the flats heavy and i'm not gonna lie that was pretty good coverage except i think he did get bumped at the last second so that was pretty you know upsetting to me that he got three on that drive it was a good drive he played the sidelines as he should in that situation i gotta play better defense i gotta run like some cover two right there that's on me man i learn and i live and i learn from my mistakes and you'll see in the second half i start to adjust accordingly so man it's like i was saying i'm in nickel normal now i just you know i want to show my opponent different looks and you know i'm not i feel like i'm all right on defense right now i gotta get much better uh on defense especially in the defensive madden i gotta just kind of like okay you're not getting any type of points that way i could feel super comfortable and confident on defense and that's my best advice to anyone out there who doesn't really feel that good on the game just master the defense be as good as you can on defense see right here we actually play cover two and bro this flat is open every play bro literally every play yeah i know the flats are op They've been OP for a while now, but man, I did not expect the man coverage and a cloud right there to, you know, give up a first. You know, I'm expecting him to get yards, of course, but the pursuit angles and just the, the cornerbacks drifting off ends up letting him get a first down. See right here, he had the insta throw flat. Uh, I don't know why he didn't throw it. I kind of got my defense all messed up right there. Second and 10, we're in the nickel over and look at what happens right here. He runs the ball, I'm not mad at it. I mean, we have pretty good run D. He ends up breaking a tackle and Champ Bailey over pursues. And man, like it's second and 10 run play. I'm not expecting that at all. Honestly, it was a good call. So, you know, even get a few yards, he ends up busting it wide open. I would not be surprised if he goes back to the run. And what he ends up doing, he runs, I believe, a corner route combo and there's just nothing open. He, If he was throwing that, that was a book. Champ Bailey, absolutely caged. Right here, man, second and 10, we were all over that, right? Somehow we're not. I don't know what Moss is doing. He can't seal the edge. Pursuit angles in this game are like, wow. For one, I mean, another second down and 10 run, I'm just not expecting it. For two, I had Rundy. I had people there and we just can't seal the edge. I don't know what happened, but it's looking like sweep is pretty overpowered. I definitely got to add it to the mix. Um, if I do run those plays right here, he's going to decide to end up going for two right here. And honestly, it's not the play call at all. He may have had the tight end open, but I shaded underneath and I had a vert hook there. I immediately pitch it because I know Warren Savage is not going to crib it, but we end up not making anything happen. And here we are, man. This is not a situation you really want to be in. 
See right here, we could have easily fumbled that. That happens quite a bit in this Madden where you kind of take off with your QB and fumble. At this point, I'm trying to freestyle. I'm trying to, you know, make him uncomfortable. And that's what we do. We throw a dot. I'm not going to lie. That looked a little scary. Champ looked like he wanted to play it. But the free form completion banner is one of the most satisfying banners in this Madden. Motion out tight end on a streak. I've seen something before and I'm like, okay, you know what? This is looking good. This is looking nice. This is looking good. I, I, I like what, what's going on right now. I got to keep him off this pace and keep on no huddling and kind of just, you know, show him this tour um, that I'm running. And, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to hit this flood uh, sideline dot and... We may have low-key had it. We end up getting screamed at. We had a couple options on that play. Just had no time. I believe that was a three-man rush. So after that sack, um, we decided, you know, run verticals right here. And I'm not going to lie. We got, we caught a huge break. He, I, if you're going to throw that wheel route, you have to throw it instantly before the man gets there. There's no low-balling wheel routes anymore. Um, bad play call, honestly. And even bad, even a worse read. 100% just got to take the sack or throw the ball away. It's all good. You know, we caught we caught life. We caught life. We did fumble in the first half, so I guess that's our break back. And right here, we're going to decide to hit Dave Casper. I told you, Dave Casper is so OP, and this play shows you why. Holy shit, that's insane. For one, I'm going to have to rewind that, but I mean, bro, 91 speed Dave Casper is different. See right here, it's a cover two look, and he has goons up top. Gilmore and Champ Bailey, I'm not going to lie, my dude is faster than them. We highball it and versus that cover two, get that animation where we rack it, where we're untouchable. That's pretty much an untouchable animation. If you get that animation, I don't think you're gonna drop the pass or you know even get tackled. I feel like right there, that was just a beautiful instance of David Casper being David Casper, best player in the game. After first down run, he decides to hit us with mesh post, and I'm not gonna lie, I trusted my third. I thought he was gonna play it. Um, I still would have done the same thing right there. I just don't think that's like a crazy open read. He had to click on and make a good catch. And, you know, it was open, but I don't think it was as open as it looked. Right here, pretty bad, um, you know, quick hike by him. He got me pretty good, but ends up just throwing it away, thankfully. Right here, we decide to mix it up. We ran a little cover two. And where is our fumble? Warren Sapp absolutely baptizes that man, Aaron Rodgers. I made some great adjustments. I ran a 25 cloud on the right with a five purple. That way, I, I, I knew some type of corner round concept was coming. He only has so many plays out of this West Coast playbook. He's not running deep attack. He's not running what else is in West Coast. I'm not even, he's not running wide receiver posts. He is just continuously calling this deep corner over and over again with the verticals mix up and a little bit of mesh post. So I'm like, okay, you know what? It's all good. We 100% should have got a fumble right there, but I'm playing good defense. I know what's coming. Probably gonna be another set of deep corner. He ends up deciding to run the ball right here. Very, very, you know, honestly, good call. If I knew the run was this good versus a certain defense, I 100% would call it. And look at me, thinking he for sure he's gonna kick three. I don't understand why you wouldn't kick three right here. But I guess he had different plans and ideas in store. Uh, this is the biggest play of the game so far. And let's see what we got. We're gonna play some decent defense. We run the cover two again. We man up some guys. And Dave Casper's our responsibility. Lester Hayes completely cages up for us. Those smart routed in routes, they're hit or miss. They're gonna be either open or completely caged and Lester Hayes plays some good defense for us. Now it's time to either what? Make this final drive or just get seven, man. If I could just get seven one way or another, I'll feel super confident in this gameplay. Um, right here, you see, that's a pretty good run, right? Five yards, I'll take that. Four yards, I'll take that, especially now in this situation i decided you know what let's turn on the two clock it might benefit us and we're gonna go back to this counter to the left side and we're gonna just motion dave castle to get an extra blocker and look at that it's pretty clean blocking if you ask me so if you run a counter maybe try that out and see if you like it or not so i just run the ball right here and end up hitting the rpo just was a pretty bad play call i'm done running that rpo honestly it's it looks promising but it just never gets yards right here man look at steve atwater is that a dot or is that just a blind predetermined guess read i knew as soon as i didn't see a cover two zone there i was throwing it probably should have highballed it to make it look safer but i want to say that was a zero curl or a five i'm not too sure if he was going to play that or not nonetheless uh definitely scary when i threw it i kind of like clenched up like oh shit, this might be over but it's all good. Right here, Dave Casper shows who he is. You can't, you can't, you can't take the ball from Casper. That Jerry Sneed has absolutely no shot at picking that off. I'm not gonna lie, you know, it was a pretty good read, honestly. Um, if I had if I had a better pass lead, it would have been much more open, but you know, we'll take it. Right here, 
everything's clicking and we just throw the worst worst pick ever man we were clicking and clacking on offense we were making it look clean it was looking like a good drive probably should have ran the ball right there got to the two minute warning we just rushed things and i'm not gonna lie guys let me know if you're throwing that because that did kind of look open i think what it is for me is you know that's for one the verticals crosser i didn't put like no slot apprentice there or nothing it's just it just like last year i was throwing it over and over again and it was always open another thing too is i had turpin right there and that might have been why and lastly maybe with vic set feed lead or just a better lob or something that might have been a dot so 100 can't call that man i know vertical just is not that consistent i'll live with it i'll die with it it is what it is but we're still not out of this game yet we could still get a stop big third and 10 right here and he's gonna hit us with mesh post thankfully champ plays it pretty well I should have pressed coverage right there. A backed off is a little too scary in this situation. And here we go, fourth and four, same thing. I'm gonna run backed off coverage. I'm just so worried about these flat routes that I'm, I'm you know, I'm very protecting them heavily. And like I said earlier, what, you, what happens if you protect the flats too much? They're gonna throw a corner out. And what I should have done, I'm gonna rewind this 100%. I should have moved Lester Hayes to the slot. Oh my goodness, I should have done this. I, as soon as that play was over, I'm like, you know what? This is why X Factors were invented and in, put into the game. Lester Hayes, if he's on the slot right here, um, he is just, I assume if I don't, you know, if the game works how it's supposed to work, he is just dropping this pass if I have Lester Hayes right there. So, you know, that's on me. Hopefully I could, uh, you know, learn from that mistake in the future, put Lester Hayes or whoever my universal coverage is right there. That I mean, they were in the game for a reason, man. And like, I don't know. I could have done that. I could have ran cover two. There's so many things I could have done. It was a fourth and four. I could have got off the field. Technically, technically speaking, the game is still not over. So let's see if we could kind of, you know, make something happen real quick. He decides to run the ball again on second and 13. End up making it a third and 17. That's the thing about Sweet, man. If you know it's coming, you're going to blow it up. Right here, look at Casper. He is so open. He finally ran deep attack. Great route combo, honestly. I should have sent the dogs, man. I was just afraid of the flats once more and that was kind of soft coverage i should have put a purple there there's so many things i could have done but you know he's gonna end up going up eight with about 40 seconds left and guys i i've done this so many times i'm done doing it man i should have just taken the ball and gone to the 20 or whatever taking the time it just happens every time to me man just from here on out guys never do this including myself i'm done letting the ball bounce i wanted to get to the 25 without wasting any time but this is pretty much going to dent this game. I mean, it's going to be super tough to come back in this situation, especially without any timeouts. What we're going to need, honestly, is like an ad catch. I have Casper on a streak, and I low-key had him, but the thing was, his guy was blinking. I made the right read, but, you know, Aaron Rodgers thrown to the left sideline. It's just tough read. Right here, we run a little bit of PA, and, you know, we don't have anything open. We end up fumbling. We do recover it, but this game is probably pretty much cooked, as you guys can tell. We end up going no huddle, trying to just throw something out of bounds. And, you know, I mean, you guys saw the gameplay, man. This gameplay was so fire. Dave Casper is the best player in the game. See right here, he almost gets another one. But same thing again, A-Rod just can't throw to the left side for whatever reason. That, that, I mean, I could have made something cook, but first down, he dropped it or didn't get his feet bounced. And right there, same thing. So we're going to end the game off with Hail Mary. I probably should have waited to throw it, but th this is just unrealistic, man. It would have been a 98-yard completion. Try to pitch it backwards and it's just nothing there. So GG's the Lord Phenom. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this gameplay. And if you guys were curious what Casper looks like on a Raiders 50, here he is, man. 91 speed, 82 run block. I mean, this is the best play in the game. I cannot stress it enough. Appreciate you guys thugging it out to the end of the gameplay. I'll see you guys in the next gameplay, whatever it may be. Till next time, guys. Peace.